mass transit opportunity and get to work and get back and convenient, safe, affordable opportunity, I think people will take that, take that advantage. Um, and if you look at the stops, one of the things that we're looking at is, as planners, you know, what are the development opportunities within a quarter of a mile around a stop? Um, you know, where can we promote higher density housing? Um, and, and so, you know, jobs, um, commercial opportunities, residential opportunities will be created. And I don't want to use Portland, but, you know, I was there and I saw what they did. Um, I've seen other cities that have, have it. Um, and it's really the same, that, that you would see uh, significant um, economic engines happening. So one is the transportation opportunity, two is the economic development engine. Um, and, you know, it's really interesting. We're working on a comprehensive plan for the city. And one of the things we've been talking about is what is the future of transportation? How do we want um, Cincinnati to look like in another 30 years? Um, and, and public transportation, convenient, safe, affordable, is really important. I think uh, the streetcar would be just the first leg of, of uh, more things to come. Um, and, and I think that uh, it will create jobs. I think it'll make it convenient for folks. I think it will be a tourist attraction also. Um, and, and so those are the, the opportunities I think that, that Street Power would have. Anybody else want to weigh in? Do you want us to answer all three questions at one time? If you want to do As that. you choose. <laughs> All right, so I will go th um, respond to all three questions and talk about the streetcar last because I'm sure this could be a great debate and Caleb will have lots to say about it. Um, so this question about planning process, right? And I, throughout the day, there's been a lot of discussion and talk about 3CDC. I don't think anybody from 3CDC is here. They, they were invited, though. Right, they were invited. But, so I mean, so this question about process and specifically the process related to 3CDC, I, I think the bigger question becomes what kind of process do we want to have and what is the quality of that input? We, especially because so much participation is mandated by the government, we often have to put process together that doesn't elicit good quality participation or input. And it also risks being very tokenistic. If I have a process and I bring you in and I say I'm taking your input, is that necessarily good public participation? And so I can't speak specifically to that 3CDC case, but I think it is about thinking about maybe it's better to have fewer processes if you can do more of them really, really well than having every, absolutely every decision be a public process. There should always be a phase for public input that's a little bit different than actually having um, you know, co-production of plans or co-design decisions being made. As for the second point, these notions of compatibility, um, I actually come down on the side very much that we should be looking at modern architecture to be integrated into the historic area. I know I've just made about 15 enemies in the room. Um, but I really think, and this comes from my experience in Prague. Prague was, is a gorgeous city and it has that mix. It's preserved a lot of historic buildings and it's built new modern forms. And it works. Amsterdam. Amsterdam, it's interesting and it's exciting. I'm gonna talk about a this interest in the creative class, yes, creating a dynamic visual landscape is one way to do that. It becomes hip, it becomes cool. All right, the streetcar. I think mostly I have questions for Charles about the streetcar. And I think that this question about the streetcar, is it an economic development tool, is it a transportation tool? What are the opportunities? What is it gonna potentially come down and do negatively? Is for me, this, this question about what is the city doing in terms of policies that go with the streetcar, right? I mean, this is one thing where you can look at Portland. They didn't just put a streetcar in. They had a whole set of policies that dealt with economic development and social equity that went in along with the streetcar. Are we looking at those policies, right? It's not just a streetcar. It has to go on with other things. I think if we're going to also bring Portland into the mix, Charles. Is our streetcar going to be free? 
right? In the urban core of Cincinnati, of in Portland, you get on the streetcar and you do not have to pay for it. Is the streetcar something that the community members who live in Over the Rhine, something that they actually would want as opposed to better bus service? I understand the rationale as an economic development tool, what the streetcar could do. And it could very much connect downtown to Over the Rhine, and it can very much be a tool to incentivize people uh, who can pay market rate for a house to move into Over the Rhine. But at the same time, are we not taking the opportunity to create transportation and economic development options for the people who are living in the area? That is my commentary on the street bar. That was a question for me. Yes, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to ask this a few times in other forums. <laughs> OK. Um, um, I, I think that there are some tools that we're looking at. Um, to incentivize this, so we, you know, we have this zoning tool. We don't have it here. Transit-oriented development. Um, we're looking at higher density um, to promote housing. In terms of social equity, um, and and in terms of the cost, uh, I, I think that the focus has really been on um, the economic development side and creating jobs. And if you create jobs for people who don't have jobs, uh, whether it's construction jobs or whether it's somebody who's driving the train or somebody who's, who has the ability to uh, take training to learn how to fix the train, um, and, also those, and, and also people who live in the neighborhood to take advantage of those opportunities, I think that is where the focus is in terms of of providing some opportunities to people in that neighborhood who don't have that opportunity right now. Um, in, in terms of, I mean, this has been a really big debated issue. Uh, you know, in, in terms of, of the cost of it, um, in terms of the operating cost, is it going to be free? No, it's not going to be free. Um, is it going to increase uh, accessibility? I think so. Is it going to create some opportunities? I think so. And uh, where do you start? You have to start someplace. And, and I think that's where we are at this point. Um, you know, you can look at Central Parkway and there's a big tunnel <laughs> under Central Parkway. Um, they started something and was Caleb 1918 19, or something like that. Never finished it. Um, just think if it was finished and what the city could look like. So I think the city has to, um, and, and they're trying to say, we have to start someplace. There is an opportunity. If you look at um, the next generation, what do we want the city to look like? What do we want our transportation opportunities to look like? This is the very beginning of that. And, and yes, I think there is some, some social equity in this. Uh, I think that there's going to be a mandate to have the majority of employees, construction workers, companies uh, be local. Um, I think there'll be a large minority participation as part of this process, as well as a local participation as part of this process. So, um, again, we have to start someplace, and you know, um, you know, they say Cincinnati is ten years behind. Um, I think we need to catch up. I think I think it's 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 a good project that will benefit a lot of people. Caleb, uh, the only thing I think to add, uh, first of all, I do support the streetcar. Uh, the reasons Charles mentioned are are certainly part of why I do. Um, the other I, thing I think that we need to keep in mind is is that Cincinnati as a city and as a metropolitan area is in competition with metropolitan areas all across the country. And we live in a time now where people are making decisions about where they choose to live, partly based on quality of life in a way that that maybe wasn't true 30, 40, 50 years ago. And uh, I think we as a city have to be able to offer 
lifestyle options to people that they can find another 